Yes, guys, we are back. Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another match preview. It's one of the bogey games. West Ham away. This is one of the fixtures that I don't think a lot of us look forward to. I guess I know it's a London derby. I know it's one of the good away games, but this is genuinely one of the banana slips that always seems to come around the corner, especially in recent seasons. But we're here to preview everything regarding the West Ham Chelsea game. We're also going to touch on the last match as well. So let us know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Hit the like button, subscribe, and big up to every single one of you watching. It's great to have you all on the show. Shout out to Kev, the co-host as always. It's great to have you back on the show. Hope everything's good. All good, bro. All good. Um, I just don't know how the fuck we come away from Bournemouth with three points Saturday. I really don't. That was a bad performance. Bro. Let's be real. Really bad performance. Um, first half. I thought it was more half. a bad half, if anything. Second half wasn't to the best. Let's um, they hit the post. Um, you know, they had the better chances, but Sancho tossing game changes. Um, you know, especially Sancho down at left decision making. Um, I've heard a lot of people talking about just you know when you look at it from the point where we've had Mudrick. Giving away the ball as cheap as possible for how many seats for two seasons running, not making the right decisions, just doing the basics as a footballer, taking a touch, scanning, playing the ball in, receiving the ball further up the pitch. Just bait like don't, you don't have to be rolled in your to do to, to do those kind of things. Just basic things as a left winger. And we've got Mudrick, you can't do the basics, and Sancho comes in first game and makes it look so simple. So I've got to see it as a, a That's good the mark player. of a good player, though. The best yeah. players are always able to make everything look easy, and I, I think that's just the example of his performance. It's, it's, it's nothing too special. It's not like we, we've seen um, a, a, a messy, a, a peak messy performance. We've just seen a, a winger getting the ball in the right position, passing it, one, two, receiving the ball somewhere else. And this is the things that Mudrick can't do. And we've had to keep on waiting season after season for Sterling and Mudrick to get together. And Sancho comes and does this first game. That gives me belief that going forward, we're going to have a better team. But still, defensively, errors are still occurring. And when you look at the Sassy's performance on that right-hand side, you don't have to be a rocket side. You don't have to be um, Alex, Fer uh, Alex Ferguson slash Jose Mourinho to figure out where our weak spot is. When you've got the sauce on the right side, curtains. And, and, and I couldn't believe when I said it. Thankfully, we shouldn't be worrying about that for the West Ham game. Mm. Because oh, like, I get it. De Sassi looked absolutely terrible. I don't oh, ever want to see him play in that position again. But that's the main thing in that yeah. position. I'm not writing him off as a centre-back. The right-back experiment, though, is dead that. No more De Sassi oh, right back. Even in the Conference League games, I don't want to see listen, it. Because he didn't even look good against the vet in the second leg. Savet, him and Badashile for, for Savet's goal when I think Badashile gave it away. And for me, they're always trying to look at someone else. They should be doing their defensive work and the pointing at someone else to do it for him. Like um, Desarci and um, Bournemouth had that chance. Desarci, the ball's going that way. Desarci's, he's like he's just stopped. But that, but that's my thing. He don't know how to defend from the wide areas. That's why, like, if you're gonna play him, you play him centrally. Or you just you don't play him nah, at all. I don't feel comfortable with him playing centrally. I don't. I don't feel comfortable with him playing on the bench, bro. It's that deep, man. These guys. I, I don't man, know. Just, like, nah. Nah. We, I've seen him have good games at centre back for us, especially first half of the season. I generally thought he was yeah. our best centre back first half of last season. So I do think he can give us something in the central areas. It's just the wide areas where I'm in complete agreement with you. He's not a right back. He shouldn't even be an emergency right back. Bring one of the academy players in. Bring Akinpong or whatever his name is. If we need, a, if we need him, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm awful with names, but yeah, him. Yeah. Bring him on if we need a right back. I don't need yeah. to see the sassy there because number one, it don't work. Number two, you're killing his confidence if you keep playing him there. Like, yeah. even if we get to West Ham, if and if let's say Gusto isn't sharp enough for a full 90 and all of that, actually, Pong, you bring him on or you start yeah. with him. Yeah. Hell, even play for Farner at right back and put Toss in centrally, like we did towards the end of the Bournemouth game, because even that was looking pretty okay. Just and, no more de Sassi. And the thing right is, back. as well, 
if I was planning, okay, if I was planning for the next game and I was playing against Schultz and I mm. seen that performance against Nizassi, my training sessions would be overload on that left side, literally. The left winger stays, keeps the ball, left back just overlaps. I literally do everything on that left side because that's where the majority of Bournemouth chances came from Saturday, from that left side. It was clear to see their intentions is down that left-hand side. And it's got to... Luckily enough, we never conceded. And we've got to give our praises to Sanchez. Sanchez kept us in that game. Sanchez... He's actually in a bit game. of form, you know. This is his third best, good game in a row. Best game in the show, shirt. He, he saved the penalty. He saved the point-blank shot. Um, there's two or three good saves he made. Absolutely phenomenal. Mm. And he kept us in that game. So we can't expect our keeper to keep us in this game for too long. Like you said, either start Ashen Pong right back or we said in the last preview, Casado. Casado could have done a better number out there for, for this RC. So, but I, th are, I think he yeah. would have only played there if we had Enzo or Dewsbury Hall fit, and both of them had illness. Yeah. So it kind of negates that. Now, that's a good option for West Ham, though, if Gusto yeah. still isn't ready. Because like, yeah, Enzo's yeah, meant no. to be back now, too. Same thing with Lavia. Well, for me personally, we, we, we spoke about. Um, Jews be all starting that game, but Viegas come in and Viegas hasn't uh, yet yeah, didn't put a foot wrong. Like his passion, his desire to get on the ball, his desire to break stuff up, maturity, he's ticking all the right boxes. And it's you know the guy is only eighteen years old. He's got he's got a, a big big career ahead of him, and he's literally come out of nowhere. So what a bargain boy that is. So for me personally, the way Viega played in that game, I, I, there's no reason why he shouldn't start against West Ham personally in that middle. See, I, I get it, but even for me, I thought Vega only grew into the game, if anything. I don't think he had a good 90 minutes. First half, I thought it was very shaky. He just had a much better second half performance. I don't want to take that from him. But for me, if Lavia's fit, well, Lavia walks straight into that team again. Yeah, well, yeah, true, yeah. And Caicedo's Caicedo. You just have to play him. Like, for me, the real question mark is just more like Enzo. You know Enzo's going to play, but yeah, I need a good game from him. I really need a good game from him. I ain't trying to write him off this early, but he also hasn't impressed me. But you know he's going to play, so it's like, this is a big match for him. But this is the game where I think Enzo could shine in. We all know West Ham, they're still growing into the, the this new philosophy, you know, they've, they've brought, brought in this new Spanish manager. What's his name? Oh, Wolves manager. Um, oh, I don't even know the Wolves manager. Oh. Was it Gary O'Neill? No, nah, what's his name? West Ham's mini manager. Oh, West Ham, Lopetegui. Lopetegui. Oh, my, my bad, my bad. I don't know what. Yeah, so the first sports and Lubegati. Fair style of football won't change over not. We all know West Ham. They like to sit and counter. Last season's game against West Ham. Three of their goals came off counter-attacks, if I can remember. Um, the 3-1 loss right at the start of the season. First game of the season, I think it was. Three of their goals of counter. So I believe they'll still be in that frame of mind. I don't think they'll change it into this pick attacky passing kind of team where Lubagati likes to do. So in a game like this, I think Enzo could could shine if you get it. He's gonna he's gonna see a lot of that ball. What is this where he's gonna pick that ball up? I think with him picking that ball up in the in the, in the spaces between the attacking midfield and that number ten, he's no good for us. He's no good for us at all. His movement's not good enough. He doesn't want to receive that ball in the half turn. And it's giving the ball away. But that's why the manager it. keeps playing him. That's that's yeah, the annoying nah. thing. Yeah, he needs to be deep. He needs to be next to Calcedo in, in the in the pivot. Yeah. Where I where I understand it is that I complained about Poch playing Enzo high up the field, but that was when we had him pressing and chasing players and all this crap. He's high up the field, but he's getting a lot of touches. Yeah. He's actually in positions where he can just spray the ball about or lay off a pass to somebody. Stuff that he should be good at. And I need to see if he can get that side of his game working because it wasn't good against Man City. It wasn't good against Palace. Wolves, like, I think he was better in the second half. First off, I didn't think he was great, but it just it, it didn't look as bad because Caicedo was having one of his worst ever performances for us in the first half. But overall, if I'm looking at anyone, it's kind of Enzo more than the manager because I, I get that Enzo's better deeper up the field, but ultimately. Mm -hmm. Your bag is passing. That's what yeah. you're meant to be good at, whether you're deep in the field or whether you're high up the field. And 
you got to be able to do that because if you can't do that, then like, what are you doing here? Respectfully. It's honestly, and that's what we brought him in for. And, and to think as well, when you're deep, that guy's got the captain's armband. We've got to see more, more from him. We've got to see more passion. We've got to see more leadership. He's got to be, be able to keep that ball in little tight spaces. And this is the philosophy which is Enzo Maraska's trying to bring to this to team. This, the philosophy and the way we're trying to play suits Enzo to a, to a T. So he should be doing, doing all this stuff. This is, this is the Enzo that we know. He's in, intricate passing, little tight touches. So if he's not doing it consistently right now, he's got to be dropped. And this is what I've been hearing a lot, a lot for the last few weeks. If, if he can't do it, someone else needs to be brought in, regardless of his pro stat, regardless of his position in the team. End of the day, it's a team game. You can't just drop it other players just because of your, your price tag. If you show what I'm trying to say, bro. I hear it. I hear it. That's what I'm saying yeah. for the West Ham game. This is massive for him. If he yeah. has another bad performance, I, I don't know how you can justify him starting at this point. But, like, I guess even in spite of that, I still have confidence in our attack. It's just my biggest worry for this game is the fact that it's just West Ham away. Yeah. Teams have those bogey grounds. Team have Teams have those fixtures that they naturally just struggle in. And this one, we've seen so many silly moments. Like last season where we literally gave away three goals. Remember the Masuaku goal in 2021? Arnat Arnautovic in 2018? Um, the lockdown game. What was it? Yarmolenko, I think, in the last minute. And we had yeah. Christensen, Rudiger and Alonso dropping disaster classes. Uh, we do not like the London Stadium. We have Hopefully we there. can break that duck, but... Yeah, we haven't won there in the last, oh, last three. Man. We haven't won there in the last three. And particularly... We've won there once with fans. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And particularly last season, that 3-1, I remember it very, very um, vigorously. Um, I think it was an holiday for it. 3-1. Um, the way they had us on three counter-attacks and... Yeah. yeah. I think some has got to come good as, of this fixture because, like I said, it's a bit of a bowl. It's a bit like Newcastle away, one of them places where we haven't had our best days there, you know. Uh, and considering how lucky we got against Bournemouth, the performances are good. I just feel like we need a good performance now. We haven't played well, um, you know. This season, I can't remember us really putting in the good performances, but we are scraping through and getting results, which is something different from last year. So I, I do think this West Ham game is massive now. I think we need to see a good performance. Regardless of it, yeah, we all want to get the win, but we need to see everyone firing now. It's about time now. Other teams are starting to pick up a bit of form. We need to be in and around that, you know, and stepping up and starting to see stuff. Because end of the day, mm. before, we, before you know it, teams are going to start pulling away from us already. And <laughs> that top four The good is, thing is, is we're not in that position yet. Yeah. Thankfully, because we haven't we haven't had a bad start to the season, and we can yeah. consolidate that with a victory today. Uh, well, Sunday, Saturday, yeah, whatever. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, For anyone Saturday. who's watching, it's a late night in it, so allow us. But it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. So, um, Is it? Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah, we we dragged this way too far. My bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, we have to get a result in this game. We have to, otherwise, you're going to hear all this old scaremongering doing the rounds again, and we've seen it because like. I use Nicholas Jackson as an example. I think Nicholas Jackson had a decent couple of games leading up to the Bournemouth match. He looked really good against Wolves. He looked really good against Crystal Palace. And, um, um, against Bournemouth, he yeah, was terrible. Is... Very, he was very poor. I won't even get it twisted. But like, I've seen a complete 180 in like the way Nicholas Jackson is spoken about just off that one game. And that I don't understand. We can call it for what it is. It was a bad performance and we need to see a better level of consistency from him because I think the problem with him at this point is that he still seems like that inconsistent player who will give you one good game and then he'll give you a bad game and then he'll give you a good game and then he'll give you a bad game. But I, just, I can't write him off. I can't write him off just yet. Yeah, I don't know about you, bro. I can't write him off yet, but time's ticking, mate. This is his opportunity. This is his chance. We haven't got a number nine, number nine. And now for me personally, I said this before, and Kinku has to start. And Kinku doesn't need five chances to put that ball in the net. And Kinku just needs a sniff. And that ball's in the net. And look at the difference. Do you think 
if Jackson was in that position, in that little tight space, we would have wiggled out that and got a shot away and scored. I don't think he would have. And this is the difference between us getting three points and us drawing the game. So he's not doing himself any favours. If I was him, I would be saying, this is my position. This is my time to shine. I've got to prove myself. And now he's going to let a player that doesn't even play in the striker position more or less take that spot. That goes show with his mentality. There's no excuses for him to be jumping stinkers after stinkers and then popping up with a goal. That's not what we need right now. We need a consistent goal scorer. We need consistent performances from our strikers. You know what I'm trying to say, bro? So for me personally, and King Q has to start against West Ham. He has to. He's gone and got the, done the goods against Bournemouth. He scored. He, he, did he score against Wolves? I think he scored against Wolves. Well, did he? No, 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 you didn't. You didn't. He scored, in, he scored in another game this season. Sure. He no, has. it was Jackson Palmer, Nonny Hattrick, and then Net, no, Felix at the end. Has he scored You're in thinking Yeah. Yeah, it might have been. might have been. Sorry, my bad. But I said this from last season, and King Q only needs a sniff. And I feel like he's going to score if he gets that chance. With, with, with Jackson, he had a couple of opportunities against Bournemouth, which he never took. He had a good chance for Levi Colwell put him in and hit mm. it at the keeper. He had another chance where he wriggled and all he had to do is find that top corner, hit it over. I just don't feel comfortable with him. Even if he has a bad performance, I don't feel comfortable with him scoring. As if in King Food, which is what I mean, some strikers don't need to have a good performance. But when it comes to putting that chance away, they will bag. And I don't feel like Jackson's going to do it yet. I just don't feel like he's going to do it. I really don't. See, here's the thing. Like, I don't want to talk against the idea of Nkunku at striker because I, I, I get it. I understand the logic behind it. And to a point, I'd be interested to see, it, see how it works for us as well. For me, though, I still just think Jackson could still offer us something up top in this game too. And I'm also low-key thinking Nkunku as an option off the bench could also be really good for us as well. Mm. So, like, ultimately, I don't know what your thoughts are, but for me, I don't know if I'm even changing the front four, if anything. Like, maybe Sancho starts, but even then, Sancho's more of a maybe because I don't know if he's training with the first team just yet. He was, he was doing individual uh, training at the start of the yeah. week. And that kind of gives me the hint that he'd be a bench option, which, again, I'm fine with. We saw his 45-minute cameo. If anything, against tired legs, I could see the effectiveness of a Sancho and an Nkunku. The same way I also get why you play your best players at the start. So, me yeah. personally, I'm keeping the front four the same. I'm going to go Noni, Neto, Palmer, and Jackson up top. I don't know what you're thinking. I just feel like after that impact, literally the second half, Going forward was was was, was, was a total. It's like watching a total different game, and I feel like that's given me more encouragement to say, you know what, start your best, and it's deservingly. You know, the both linked up for that goal. Like this is the thing: we can't wait until half time to make substitutions. We could be two 0 down at half time. It could be too late. Jackson could have missed two chances by then. Like we need to have the best players on the pitch to be able to put that ball in the net, and maybe that gives us a chance in the second half. I'm just fed up of seeing the same Spurn chances and the bad performances. I just feel like we need to start with our best. But you know, this is not pre-season. So what would your front four be then? Sancho on the well, left. Actually, no, it's got to be front five, in it? Because there's another yeah. Cam too. But that's so, probably going to be Enzo. So it'd be Sancho is. Deservingly, after that performance, deservingly on the left. No and arguments Q -Q, here. And QQ, striker, Palmer behind, uh, Mudawake on the right. And what, Enzo in the middle with Palmer? Enzo and Caicedo in the pivot. Oh, so no Lavia? Depends if Lavia, I don't think Lavia would be fit. So Lavi is meant to be in training as well. I, I don't think you're rushing back. Actually, I, I I don't know yeah. because the last it, one is continuing their rehabilitation yeah. with Gusto it, and Lavia, so it, I'm not it, sure. It, it'd be stupid to bring him back so quickly, you know. 
of, you know. Yeah, because you know what? We're doing the whole load management thing to death this season. So I, I could yeah. see that. Yeah. I hear Jen, it. The next game on Wednesday, on Thursday, next Thursday, maybe give him half a game then. We need to, you know, just game management. You know, we're just coming up from injury. Him and Gustav, maybe they get 45 minutes in the next game. What we're trying to move away from is the same thing we were doing last year. Bringing players back, throwing them in the yeah. deep end, and then they're getting the reoccurring injuries back again. You see what I'm trying to say with it? So that would be the safe option for me. I feel like last season we was a bit like, give Jackson the time, give Jackson time. And he done okay, but he never caught with the goods. I think and King can now his fit has to start for me. He's the difference maker for us right now. Hear it, hear it. So we're going Nkunku, Sancho. Um, With the way who is it? So we have Palmer, Noni, Sancho. Who is the other cam? So, so it's a three up top. It's like we and do then, a three, two, four, one, don't we? When we're in possession, it's a four, two, one, three. So you'd have you'd have Sancho on the left, and Nkunku up top. Madiweke, and then in the 10, behind and King Q, Palmer, two pivots. You'd have no, no, but we play with two attacking midfielders. We play in the 3 2 4 1. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah, who's well. the other cam in there? So you'd have Enzo as as the. What can I say? Like the number 10, but he's running from deep, let's say. Mm. So Because you remember last yeah. game, we basically had Cucurella playing as a 10. This is correct. This is the thing. I don't think anyone really sticks to the. I really thought that he was a, a manager which likes to be disciplined and everybody sticks the same point. But what I'm seeing is everybody's mixing and matching the invert and this and. Yeah, because like in and out of possession, it's different. I think it's more yeah. of like a 4 3 3 4 2 yeah. 1 out of yeah. possession it's, and in possession, it's a 3 4 2 1. No, 3 2 4 1. I'm yeah. still trying to Mate, get the hang of it. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to see because, like you said, in the defense, it looks like. In the defense, it looks like we got right. three. Looks looks like we got three, and then on the attack, it looks like we got four. It's just it's I don't know how. End of the day, it's a tactic that you know we have to. We're do still lot, learning it, isn't it. We have to do a lot of research on it, but it it is it working? Only time will tell. We have to just go I ahead. Think the only thing it. that's like looking worrying about the formation is defensive transition. When we lose the ball, like we oh, wow. we seem to be a little bit of a mess for the first few seconds trying to find out where to position ourselves. Yeah. But even that's more like a matter of time. Yeah, of course. But matter of time as well as having the right players for the right position. And when you've got this Assi playing right back, it's only it's only gonna <laughs> have a have a have a bad effect because is anybody comfortable with Disassi? When you if you're a right centre back and you've got Disassi playing to the right of you. What are you thinking as a centre back? Shall I go and, and support him, or should I drop off and, and pick up the striker? Obviously, if you've got a right back, Gusto and James, you feel comfortable with them to stick to your position. And this is what we've seen on on, on Saturday when the Sassy completely turned his back and it was like, "If you follow, you get it." They're not feeling. You see what I'm trying to say? Mm. Relationships have got to grow. Understanding's got to grow. Confidence has got to grow. So I believe. Uh, we're getting found out on transition because we haven't got the right players in the right position. And then when Tossing came on, it seemed to me that it seemed a bit more comfortable at the back there. I don't know about you, but it seemed a bit more calm at the back. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's got that composed character about him and he's got the line-breaking passes too, which I think he's probably got better than most of our centre-backs bar maybe Colwell. Colwell's yeah. passing is just different level. We're, we're starting to see that already. Yeah, but for me, like, the back line, you don't see any changes except the right back. Like, it's either Gusto, or if he's not fit, you play Achipong. Worst case scenario, you play Fafana. I know we want to keep Fafana and Colwell's partnership together, but it's also just a one-game thing, and for the benefit of the team, we can't be dealing with the Sassy at right back. It's not going to help him. It's not going to help the team. Yeah. So, I think that's the only real change I'd see in the back four. Especially when you got Kudos down that left as well. That's just going to be an Kudu absolute... against the Sassy. That's not right. It's just going to be, um, it's going to be hard to watch. <laughs> it's going to be mm. hard to watch, bro. So that team in transition looks worrying. Thank goodness Moyes isn't still there. Yeah, 
Why do, do you think West Ham have gone gone a bit? Yeah, no, I touched really a bit on West Ham now. Do, 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 what do you feel like West Ham? Do, do you think they've started well? What do you think? Can you see any difference under the new uh, manager? They've not started great. Like I know it, they, they're changing philosophies, like we are too. So I don't think it's any real indictment on the team. Yeah, it's yeah. just they're transitioning yeah. with a worse level of players and. Oh. And also, they've kind of had more, a bit more of a difficult run than we we've had. Like they've had Aston Villa, they've had Manchester City. Yeah, uh, they beat that's, West Ham, drew true. with Fulham, which I mean is a bit more disappointing. But even then, it's it's kind of a more difficult start to the season than what we've had. So I don't think it means yeah. too much of them as well. But yeah. it means that we're probably not going to be dealing with low blocks unless they take a lead. So that should work into our hand a little bit more. We're not dealing with David Moyes and just sit back and set pieces because that's what really killed us last season. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a total different ball game. And like I said, we've saying this from day one. Everything's on the manager. Lou Bugatti's not a sit-back counter-attacking manager. And I think last year, this is what hurt us. Playing against them kind of teams who couldn't find the spaces. Now we've got Sancho. Now we've got um, Neto, we've got little players that can get into them little gaps and the more intricate than style in the Mudrick. Let's be right, the better on the ball, the confined spaces, the more smarter in them positions. So I'm not scared really of West. I think this West Ham game is going to be a total different game to what we've seen the last few years. I think they are there for a take. They haven't had a good start, same as us, but it's down to our mentality now. You know, we cannot be letting off now. We kind of be letting our foot off the, off the pedal now. We've got luck against Bournemouth. We've got to push on and get these three points because, like I said, it's only a couple of slips and you find yourself having a seven or eight point gap from that top four. And we don't mm-hmm. need it so quickly, bro. Things can turn quickly. You know how it is, Lou. We, things can turn very quickly. And on very the other quickly. mark, like, if we can get a run of victories by ourselves, we even give ourselves, like, not we don't, we just put ourselves within the mark already, but we also give ourselves a little bit of room for let's say we do go through a period where we drop points because it is going to come at some point this season. At least you start the season well. Last season we had the easiest start of the campaign statistically out of everyone in the league, and we got five points in five games. Like at least now we've already bettered that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Remains to be seen, and it? it all depends on this match. Because like, we, if we break the duck at West Ham away, That's that it. should raise a lot uh, more of a positive mood around the fan base. Because right now, I still think we're on like a tightrope. Everything's decisive. stable for now, just because yeah. we won, and that's yeah. it. Not because of the way we were playing. I just feel like we're all indecisive. It's it's a weird feeling that Charles. Like I've never. We've got all the players. You know, but we still get to find our feet. But what can we say? What are people expecting? If a sport and league manager has been here two and a half months, he's still got a have his imprint on this squad. You know what I mean? So we a bit like, what's to come for the future? But it's promising signs. Better than last season. Like defensive structure on um, set plays. Little if you if you uh look at attention to detail within within a team and you can just record certain things from last year to this year, you'd see what I'm on about, where Sanchez now is pulling players and say, you get there, commanding his box. It's better in the... It's looking better in that aspect, but time will tell. We still, we still need to grow. I think this could maybe take another month, two months to, to take off, but as long as we're picking the points on the way, I think we'll be happy. But if we start sniffing points, that's when we're going to get on the manager's back. And there's, there's going to be naive people that haven't got the patience or the born knowledge to understand that things take time, bro. You mm. know what I'm trying to say? But me personally, I understand that this may take another month or two months to, to, to take off. But a couple of bad results, people are going to be like, oh, fuck um, this, this Enzo ball, whatever, whatever, whatever. Get him out. Bro, it took 20 minutes against Man City. For that to already happen, which is why I like I've I've got a very low level of patience with this fan base. But that's also why we need to get the results too. Just just get results and everybody shuts their mouths at the end of the day. But until then, it's just like ah, oh, cool. Like have standards now, but where were they last season in it? But exactly. hey, that's that's a story for a different time. So before we get off the bed, what are your predictions? 
predictions, all I'm going to say, goal scorers. Oh, you want goal scorers too? Okay. Um, Why not? I'm going 2-1 Chelsea. I hate 2-1s because they feel like the most base level bet you can make. But I I, I don't want to say 3-1 just yet. Mm. Actually, tell a lie. Let's be a little bit confident. Let's say 3-1 because I do think we're winning anyway. I just think the surefire thing is I don't believe we get a clean sheet. Two Mm. clean sheets on the bounce. Fair play. Fair play, but that's something I need to see. Yeah, and I think West Ham have got so much attacking talent, I can't see it. But, um, I was saying yeah. Kunku scores again, Cole Palmer. I could, I could maybe see a silly penalty from somewhere for us. And you know what, Nicholas Jackson, Nicholas Jackson, I'll see a Jackson goal. God knows who scores for West Ham, but I think somebody scores. What about you? I'm feeling the T1, to be fair. Uh, T1. I just feel like we'll start off we'll start off well. And I think that will pull if we start off well, I think that will push West Ham further and further back into their shell. So it's all about how we start. And I think the more West Ham go further and further back, I think there'll be more chances for us. So they can see I can see Sancho getting one. I just got a funny feeling he's gonna bang. I'll say Sancho. And then Kinku. And I could see, yeah, Sancho and then Kinku. P1 Charles. Sancho goal would be sensational. But we'll oh, no. see. <laughs> we will see. Yeah, yeah. Let us know all your predictions down in the comment section below as well, guys. Big up to every single one you've just been watching. Let's hope we get a victory. Let's hope we get a victory because we need that. We need a run of victories. So we'll see what happens. Big up to everybody. Hit the likes, subscribe. And as always, up.